All right, today we are going to do um, an explanation of how to find the equations of asymptotes on a hyperbola. And again, in this image, the asymptotes here are shown as these red dotted lines. They're the lines that the actual hyperbola, which is in blue, approach but does not touch. And we're going to work on how to find the equation of those today. So let's say that uh, the equation we're given for the hyperbola is x minus 3 divided by 2 squared minus y minus 1 divided by 5 squared equals 1. To find the equations of this hyperbola's asymptotes, what we need to do is use an equation um, that's kind of a modified version of the point-slope uh, form of a line, which just as a reminder, point-slope form says that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now I'm going to modify this um, to fit exactly what we're doing. And so I can change it to y minus, and then instead of y1, I'm going to put k in here because we're going to use our center point, and our center point is h comma k. So that will always be true. Um, so I'm going to put a k there instead of y1. And then instead of slope, the slope is always going to be equal to b divided by a, but we're going to have a we're going to have two lines because there's two asymptotes for every hyperbola, and one of those is going to be a positive slope, and the other one is going to be negative. So it's going to be plus or minus b divided by a. So that's what I'm going to put in here instead of slope, and then. The x doesn't change, but instead of x1, I'm going to put the other half of our center point, which is h. So this equation right here will always give you, or this formula, I should say, right here, will always give you the equation of the asymptote for any hyperbola. Now, with the hyperbola we are given right here, uh, my center point is at 3, comma 1, and my a value is 2, and b value is 5. So if I plug everything in, y minus k, k in this case is a 1, so I put a 1 in, and that's coming from right here, equals plus or minus, uh, b is 5, and a is 2, and then x minus my h value is 3, and that's coming from right there. So I end up with y minus 1 equals plus or minus 5 divided by 2 times x minus 3. Um, I'm okay with the equation being left in this form as your final answer, so you could simplify it into a y equals expression, and I'll show you how to do that in one second. All right, so to simplify this equation, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually split it into two equations because of this plus or minus right here. Um, so I'm going to split it into one equation that says y minus 1 equals the positive 5 halves times x minus 3. And then my other equation is going to be the y minus 1 equals negative 5 halves times x minus 3. And then basically the steps that I'm going to take are going to be exactly the same on both equations, and we're just doing basic algebra to solve. So I'm going to try to get y by itself. The first thing I'm going to do, though, to simplify this is actually distribute my 5 halves. So I have 5 halves x minus 5 times 3 is 15, so this ends up becoming 15 halves. And then I can add 1 to both sides of this equation. And 1 is actually the same thing as... Uh, 2 halves, so that's actually what I'm going to add because I'm adding fractions and remember you have to have common denominators, so I end up with y equals 5 halves x and then negative 15 halves plus 2 halves ends up giving me a negative 13 halves, so that would be one of my equations, and then the other equation I do the exact same thing I start by distributing, but now it's negative uh, 5 halves instead of positive, so I end up with a negative 5 halves x minus, um, now I'm going to end up with plus, because a negative times a negative becomes a positive. 
Um, oops, and I forgot my X. There it is. Um, so I end up with a positive 15 halves. And I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And again, in this case, it's going to be 2 over 2. So I have my common denominators. So y equals negative 5 halves x plus 15 halves plus 2 halves is 17 halves. You could leave these as the fractions that they're in, or if you would like, you could also write it as decimals. So this one would be 2.5x minus 6.5. And this one over here would be y equals negative 2.5x plus 8.5. And so those would be your equations of asymptotes. All right, let's go ahead and do a second example. So now I have the equation of y minus 4 divided by 3 all squared minus x plus 2 all squared equals 1. So in this case, my center point is going to be at negative 2 comma 4. And I'm getting the negative 2 because right here I have plus 2, which means I have to switch it to a negative 2. And then the 4 is coming from right over here with the y term. Now my a value in this case is 1 because I'm not actually dividing the x by anything and that's the same as or the x term by anything. So that's the same as dividing by 1 and so a equals 1. And my b term is 3 because the y term is being divided by b, or by 3. Uh, so now that I know that, I can plug into the equation that we just learned. So y minus k equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So I plug it in. y equals, or I'm sorry, not equals, y minus um, k, which is 4, equals plus or minus b, which is 3, divided by a, which is 1, times x minus negative 2. And when I subtract a negative 2, that can just become plus 2. And then I could simplify this real quick into y minus 4 equals plus or minus 3 times x plus 2. And again, you could leave it as this as an answer. Or if you wanted to, you could simplify and get um, your terms in y equals mx plus b form or slope intercept form. Which if you were to go through the steps to simplify it, you would get the two equations as y equals 3x plus 10 and y equals negative 3x minus 2.